What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be installing the drilled and slotted racing brakes on the Civic. Now I got these rotors and pads from eBay. Uh, I've had really good luck with them in the past and they work really well. Now this isn't a big brake kit so it's not going to be upgrading the size. Um, we're just upgrading from the factory rotor and pads to a drilled and slotted. Now the purpose of a drilled and slotted is to allow the brakes to cool down faster. Um, Engineering Explained does a really good video and showing how they work, but basically the air goes through these channels and through here and allows it to cool down um, a little bit better. Now this will definitely help since we've been doing some higher speed runs and slowing down fairly quick. So I'll show you how to properly break these things in. Now I will be upgrading to a big brake kit eventually, just not in this video. So we're gonna go ahead and install these. First thing you're gonna wanna do is jack the car up and uh, secure a jack stand underneath in a solid spot. Then take the wheel off and then we'll go into detail from there. Right, so on these Civics, um, typically there's Phillips head screws right here. Now there's a bunch of different tools they make to get these off. You can just use a normal, uh, bit for a screw gun and put a socket on that bit and ratchet it off. Um, sometimes they don't come out very easy. The method I found that works the best is a hammer and a screwdriver. Now basically just do that while turning and it jars them loose pretty well. Now it doesn't always work but uh, it does help if you have some penetrating oil, um, some best line or something like that. We'll try it again on this one. There we go. Came out. Nice. Okay, so now we're going to actually remove the entire caliper itself, which on the back, there's two 17 millimeter big bolts. I already undid this piece right here, which is the brake line. It's a little bracket with a 10 millimeter bolt, um, but we'll remove that so we can get this off. All right, so as you can see here, brake pads are still in really good shape, um, but we're gonna obviously replace these with the new ones that came with. And sometimes they come with new clips, but they didn't this time, um, but it's not a big deal. All right, you can typically just hang it up with a piece of wire um, or a zip tie or something, but I just put my impact underneath it. Now this will just come right off like that. Now we can put the new one in just like that. Don't forget to put these back in. Not required because the wheel technically holds it all in place, but if it's in good shape and you already have them, might as well put them back on. All right, now typically at this point, I like to take a big C-clamp. They make a specialty tool for this, but this works perfectly fine doing it this way. I put the C-clamp in just like this. And this is to compress the piston that's inside. I want that all the way back down. All right, now that it's compressed all the way in, we will take the brand new um, brake pads and we'll put them in according to where they go. Just like that. Now we're going to put this bracket up here back on. All right, so as you can tell, it's a pretty simple install. Now, while I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and bleed the brakes. Um, you only need to bleed them if this part here has been opened uh, or the brake line has come off completely. So I'm just going to be using a vacuum line and an empty plastic bottle. We're going to stick the vacuum line on the bottle like this. And then we're going to stick the other end in the bottle so that way it makes less of a mess. Now I am going to paint these uh, a different color. I'm not quite sure what color yet. 
So if you guys have an idea, let me know. And no, I'm not going black or gray with it. It has to be a bright color to match the theme on the car. Um, but basically, I'm going to have Casey inside pumping it up. And then when I tell, tell him to hold it, um, I'm going to release the pressure. And then we're going to check the fluid level frequently. Um, but I don't think it needs bled very much. So I'm just going to go ahead and have him pump it up. Go ahead and hold it. Okay, I'm going to have him do it again. Hold it. Alright, we definitely had some air pockets, so it's a good thing we're doing this. Go ahead, one more time. Hold it. Alright, this side seems like it's done. Um, so we'll go ahead, put the other side's rotor and uh, pads on, and then we'll do it one more time on that side. And now we can move on to the other side. Real quick, there is something else I wanted to show you. Now this one didn't have the Phillips head screws on it, but uh, I wanted to show you this spot right here. These thread holes, uh, if you can't get your rotor off, um, try using a bolt in these holes. Uh, they take like 12 millimeter bolts typically that Hondas have. Um, you can just push them in there, tighten them down, not push them in, but tighten them down and it will, if you tighten this side and tighten this side and go back and forth, it'll eventually pry it off. So I uh, hope that little tip helped someone. Another thing I failed to mention is you need to brake clean these typically. Uh, they'll have like an oil, oily substance on them. These ones did not. They came in the sealed uh, packages, so um, I haven't done the brake clean on these, and I'm not going to because um, it's worked for me not doing it. But on ones that have like an oily substance on them, you definitely want to hit them with some brake clean inside and out uh, to get all that off of there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the wheel back on, and then I'll explain the brake-in procedure. Alright, this side is done. Everything is tightened up. Um, fluid levels topped off. And the passenger side is done. Tightened up. And the brakes are bled. So you could bleed the rears as well, but they seem to be doing pretty good. So it's just the front kind of felt weird. So they feel real solid now. We're gonna go out, take it for a spin. Alright, so the first video that we got. Uh, the video footage wasn't very good. I'll show you a clip real quick. Alright, we're, we're slowing down from 80, we'll go to 80 to 20, just on the first uh, initial braking. But basically we're going to go ahead, get on it, and I'll show you how to brake them in. get nice and warm go down to about 20 miles an hour and then speed back up and do it again aggressive that way the brakes get nice and hot and then I'm gonna speed up again and do this a couple more times don't want to fully make a stop um, after you've slowed down to about 20 mile an hour you'll just drive normal all the way back to the house um, not doing any long-term sitting with the brakes compressed 
because that will heat the brakes up and that's when you get warping and stuff like that. So we're just going to drive it easy. Now let the brakes cool down that way and once we get back to the house I'll explain some more. Alright, we got back to the house and we've been letting the brakes cool down for about 20 minutes and I'll show you what they look like. So this is what the brakes should look like after you've broken them in. Uh, you can see down here in the lower section um, it still has a silver look to it but the shiny look is uh, normal so that's what they'll look like glazed over after you've fully broke them in. Uh, these things are super touchy now. I'll leave a link in the description for these exact ones if you wanted to buy them. Um, I think these ones only fit the DX, LX, CX, HFs, uh, stuff like that. The bigger disc brakes and calipers would be for like the EX and the SIs, which Casey has an EX. I have a DX. Um, so I'll show you the passenger side real quick. You can see on this side as well, has that silver at the bottom. Um, that's totally normal. Uh, that's just where the brake is grabbing is where it's shiny. So they work really good. I'm really impressed with them. I don't have any shake in the steering wheel now and it seems to stop really easily. I barely press the brake pedal and she stops now. So really happy with it. Um, definitely gives me some peace of mind knowing that my car will actually stop better now. So, but yeah, I wanted to give my wife a shout out and say thanks for holding the camera. I really appreciate it. She did a really good job at holding it as steady as she could. She was trying to be forced back in the seat whenever I was hitting boost. So, um, but yeah, we had some issues with the other recordings. They were super shaky as I'm sure you've seen, um, but I don't know, we recorded like four different videos, separate videos, and it still did it. But Casey was holding it as still as I am right now. And it wasn't on screen, you couldn't see that shakiness. But when we downloaded the images, that's what they look like. So new recording equipment is definitely coming soon. But yeah, as for the brakes, they're doing good. Link will be in the description for those exact ones I bought. Um, I've been trying to pump out content. As you guys have noticed, I've been putting video after video after video. So... I'm uh, probably going to slow down just a little bit so I can keep giving you some content. So I'm knocking out a lot of stuff out all at once. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely hit the like button. Drop a comment below. As you know, it helps the channel grow. Um, and you guys have done an awesome job so far. So as I like to say, I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, stay safe. God bless and stay awesome.